Chapter Ten of Kabumpo in Oz. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Pam Castile. Kabumpo in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. Chapter Ten. Peg and Wag to the Rescue. For a long time after the terrific bang following Ruggedo's final expansion, Wag and Peg Amy had been too stunned to even move. Crowded together in the little rock room, they lay perfectly breathless. Umpting sappened, quavered the rabbit at last. That sounds rather queer, but I think I know what you mean, said Peg, sitting up cautiously. Something has happened. Ruggedo's been blown up, I guess. "'Mixed magic!' groaned Wag gloomily. "'I knew it would explode. "'Say, Peg, what makes this room so small?' "'I don't know,' sighed the doll in a puzzled voice, "'for neither Peg nor Wag realized how much they had grown. "'But let's go above ground and see what has become of Ruggedo.' "'One at a time, when with great difficulty, they got through the door. "'Why, there are the stars!' cried Peg Amy, "'clasping her wooden hands rapturously. Real stars. The top of the cave had gone off with the old gnome king, and the two stood looking up at the lovely skies of Oz. It doesn't seem so high as it used to, said the rabbit, looking at the walls. Why, I believe I could jump out if I took a good run and carry you too. Come a short, Peg. Aren't you mixed, Wag dear? Don't you mean come along? asked Peg, smoothing down her torn dress. Well, now that you mention it, my head does feel queer, admitted the rabbit, twitching his nose. Bored of sackwards. Sort of backwards, corrected Peg gently. Well, never mind. I know what you mean. Peg and Wag to the rescue, but do let's try to find that awful box of magic. You know, Ruggedo brought me to life, Wag, with something in that box. Only good thing he ever did, said Wag, shaking his head. But I think you were alive before, he added solemnly. "'You always seemed alive to me.' "'I think so, too,' whispered Peg excitedly. "'I can't remember just how or where, but, oh, Wag, I know I've been alive before. I remember dancing.' Peg took a few awkward steps, and Wag looked on dubiously, too polite to criticize her efforts. He didn't even laugh when Peg Amy fell down. Peg laughed herself, however, as merrily as possible. "'It's going to be such fun being alive,' she said, picking herself up gaily. "'Such fun, Wag, dear. Why, there's Gleg's box.' She pounced upon the little shining gold casket. Ruggedo didn't take it after all.' "'Is it shut?' asked Wag, clapping both paws to his ears. "'Look out for explosions, say I.' "'No, but I'll soon close it,' said Peg, and shutting Gleg's box, she slipped it into the pocket of her dress. It was about half the size of this book you are reading, and as Peg's pockets were big and old-fashioned, it fitted quite nicely.' "'Come a short,' said Wag again, looking uneasily, for he was anxious to get out of the gnome's cave. So Peg seated herself carefully on his back, and clasped her wooden arms round his neck. Then Wag ran back a few steps, gave a great jump, and sailed up, up and out of the cave. Ten penny teacups!' shrieked the soldier with the green whiskers falling over backwards. "'What next?' For Wag, with Peg on his back, had leaped straight over his head. Picking himself up, and with every whisker in his beard prickling straight on in, the grand army of Oz backed toward the royal stable. When he had backed half the distance, he turned and ran for his life, but he need not have been afraid. "'What a funny little man!' chuckled Wag. "'Why, he's no bigger than we are. He's no Then suddenly Wag clutched his ears. "'Oh!' he screamed, beginning to hop up and down. I forgot all my treasures, my olden goop soons. Oh, oh, my purple soul walks. I forgot my purple soul walks. You're what? cried Peg Amy, clutching him by the fur. Now, Wag, dear, you're all mixed up. Perhaps it's cause your ears are crossed. There now, do stop wiggling your whiskers and turn out your toes. But Wag continued to wiggle his whiskers and turn in his toes and roar for his purple soul walks. Stop! screamed Peg at last, with both hands over her wooden ears. I know what you mean. Your purple wool socks. Yes, sighed the rabbit, slumping down on a rock and holding his head in both paws. 
"'Well, don't you think?' the wooden doll shook her head jerkily. "'Don't you think it's just as well? Ruggedo stole all those things, and you wouldn't want stolen soup spoons, now would you?' Wag took a long breath and regarded Peg uncertainly. Then something in her pleasant wooden face seemed to brace him up. No, he sighed solemnly. I suppose not. I ought to have left Rug long ago. But then you couldn't have helped me, said Peg brightly. Let's don't think about it any more. You've been awfully good to me, Wag. Have I? said Wag more cheerfully. Well, you're a good sort, Peg. A regular princess, he finished, puffing out his chest. And anything you say goes. Princess? laughed the wooden doll, pleased nevertheless. I'm a funny princess in this old dress. Did you ever hear of a wooden princess, Wag? You look like a princess to me, said the rabbit stoutly. Dresses don't matter. This speech so tickled the wooden doll that she gave Wag a good hug and began dancing again. Being alive is such fun, she called gaily over her shoulder, and you are so wonderful. Wag's chest expanded at least three inches, and his whiskers trembled with emotion. Hop on my back, Peg, and I'll take you anywhere you want to go, he puffed magnificently. But the wooden doll had suddenly grown sober. Wherever is the castle? she cried anxiously. She remembered exactly where it had stood when she was an unalive doll, and now not a tower or turret of the castle was to be seen. Oh, groaned Peg Amy. Ruggedo has done something dreadful with his mixed magic. Wag rubbed his eyes and looked all around. Why, it's gone, he cried, waving his paws. What shall we do, if only we weren't so small? We've got the magic box, said Peg hopefully, and somehow I don't feel as small as I used to feel, do you? Well, I feel pretty queer myself, said the rabbit, twitching his nose. Maybe it's because I'm hungry. There's a kitchen garden over there near the royal stables, and I think if I had some carrots I'd feel better. Of course you would, cried Peg, jumping up. I forgot you had to eat. So, very cautiously, they stole into the royal cook's garden. Wag had often helped himself to carrots from this garden before, but now, sitting on his haunches, he stared around in dazed surprise. "'Everything's different,' wailed the rabbit dismally. "'You're the same, and I'm the same, but everything else is all mixed up. Look at this carrot. Why, it's no bigger than a blade of grass.' Wag held up a carrot in disgust. "'Why, it will take fifty of these to give me even a taste, and the lettuce, look at it. Everything shrunk. Even the houses,' cried the big funny bunny, looking around. "'My walks and hoop soons. Everything's hunk.' Peg Amy had followed Wag's gaze, and now she jumped up in great excitement. "'I see it now,' cried Peg. "'It's us, Wag. Everything's the same, but we are different. Some of that mixed magic has made us grow. We're bigger, and everything else is the same. I am as tall as the little girl who used to play with me, and you are even bigger, and I'm glad, because now we can help find the castle and Ruggedo and try to make everything right again.' Peg clasped her wooden hands. "'Aren't you glad, too, Wag?' The rabbit shook his head. "'It's going to take an awful lot to fill me up,' he said doubtfully. "'I'll have to eat about six times as much as I used to.' "'Well, you're six times as large. Isn't that any comfort?' "'My head doesn't feel right,' insisted Wag. "'As soon as I talk fast, the words all come wrong.' "'Maybe it didn't grow as fast as the rest of you,' laughed the wooden doll." But don't you care, Wag? I know what you mean, and I think you're just splendid. Now hurry and finish your carrot so we can decide what to do. If mixed magic caused all this trouble, added Peg half to herself, mixed magic's got to fix it. I'm going to look at that box. Wag, nibbling industriously, had not heard Peg's last speech, or he would doubtless have taken to his heels. Sitting unconcernedly in a cabbage bed, the wooden doll took the gold box from her pocket. Fortunately, she had not snapped the magic snap, and it opened quite easily. Her fingers were stiff and clumsy, and the moon was the only light she had to see by, but it did not take Peg long to realize the importance of Glegg's magic. "'I wonder if he rubbed this on the castle,' she murmured, holding up the bottle of vanishing cream. "'And how would one bring it back? Let me see now.' One after the other, she took out the bottles and boxes in the tiny tea-set, 
the reanimating rays she passed over without realizing they were responsible for bringing her to life. But the question box Peg pounced upon with eager curiosity. Oh, if it only would answer questions, fluttered Peg. Then, holding the box close to her mouth, she whispered, Where is Ruggedo? Who are you talking to? asked Wag, looking up in alarm. Now don't you get mixed up, Peg. It's a question box, said the wooden doll, but it's not working very well. She shook it vigorously and held it up so that the light streaming down from the stable window fell directly on it. In silver letters on the lid of the box was one word, Ev. Ev! Raggedo's in Ev! cried Peg Amy, rushing over to the rabbit. Can you take me to Ev, Wag dear? Of course, said Wag, nibbling faster and faster at his carrots. I'll take you anywhere, Peg. Then it's going to be all right, I know it, chuckled the wooden doll, and putting all the magic appliances back into the box, she closed the lid with a snap, and this time the magic catch caught. Is it far to Ev? asked Peg Amy, looking thoughtfully at the place where the castle had once been. Quite a long journey, said Wag, but we'll go hopping. Ev is near Ruggedo's old home, and it's across the deadly desert, but we'll get there somehow, trust me. And when I do, spluttered Wag, thumping his hind feet determinedly, I'll pound his curly toes off, the wicked little monster. Did you ask the question box where the castle was? he inquired hastily, for he saw Peg was going to tell him he must not pound Ruggedo. Why, no. How silly of me. Peg felt in her pocket and brought out the gold box. She tried to open it as she had done before, but it was no use. She pulled and tugged and shook it. Then Wag tried. There's a secret to it, puffed the rabbit at last. Took Rug a whole night and day to discover it. Can't you remember how you opened it before, Peg? The wooden doll shook her head sadly. Well, never mind, said Wag comfortingly. Once we find Ruggedo, we can make him tell. We'd better start right off, because if any of the people around here saw us, they might try to capture us and put us in a circus. We are rather unusual, you know. The rabbit regarded Peg Amy complacently. One doesn't see six-foot rabbits and live dolls every day, even in Oz. No, agreed Peg Amy slowly. I suppose not. The moon, looking down on the strange pair, ducked behind a cloud to hide her smile, for the giant funny bunny strutting about pompously an old-fashioned wooden peg in her torn frock were enough to make anyone smile. You think of everything, sighed Peg, looking affectionately at Wag. Who wouldn't for a girl like you? You're a princess, Peg, a regular princess. The rabbit said it with conviction, and again Peg happily smoothed her dress. Hop on, chuckled Wag, and then I'll hop off. Seating herself on his back and holding tight to one of his long ears, Peg announced herself ready. Then away through the night air shot the giant bunny, away toward the western country of the Winkies, and each hop carried him twelve feet forward and sent up great spurts of dust behind. End of chapter 10 Recording by Pam Castile